Hey guys, welcome to this video. I posted a video on TikTok about zero to the zero equaling one. I didn't think that there was any debate about it. I thought everybody understood that zero to the zero equals one. The point of my video was to demonstrate a way of thinking of it where it could make sense. And instead, the comments got riddled with people who were saying, no, it's undefined or it's indeterminate. It's really hard to go through all that explanation in a one minute TikTok. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why some people say it's undefined. Some people say it's indeterminate. Some people say it's zero. Some people say it's one. Please be kind in the comments. I am open to more debate. If there's anything someone has a problem with, I may be wrong about something. We can all get to the point where we understand. Please subscribe. I would love for more people to watch my content. First, I'll review the reason why zero to zero is one. The concept is called the empty product. So this is what I talked about in the video. How many twos do we have up here? We have two twos. So I put two to the two. How many threes do we have up here? We have one three, so I put three to the one. How many fives do we have up here? We have one five, so I put five to the one. Now, how many sevens do I have? We'll have zero seven, so I do a seven to the zero. And if we stop there for a second and just ignore this piece, then it should make sense that two to the two is four, three to the one is three, five to the one is five, and seven to the zero is one. If we multiply four times three times five times one, we go back to 60. And that is why seven to the zero equals one. I don't think there's any controversy at seven to the zero equals one. Where the controversy got introduced was when I said zero to the zero equals one. But it's the same idea. How many zeros are up here? There are zero zeros. That would also be one. There's nothing to change it. If there's one zero up here, that would change the product. But since there's no zeros up here, we multiply by one because we don't want to change the whole answer because there's nothing there to change the answer. So the conclusion with this logic is that zero to the zero equals one, just like seven to the zero equals one. It's the same thought process. For the people who said zero to zero is undefined, this is the reason why they said it. They used algebraic manipulation and came up with something. And I don't mean manipulation in a bad way. It's fine. This algebraic rules are great. N to the zero equals N to the one minus one, which is the same thing as N to the one times N to the negative one, which is N over N. And this is the reason why nobody argues with seven to the zero equaling one, because from here, we can show that seven to the zero is seven over seven, which is equal to one. So there's no algebraic issues with seven to the zero. Now where the issue does arise is if we do zero, zero to the zero, that would lead us to zero over zero, which makes it undefined. At the stage they introduced division, they should have said n can't equal zero because you can't do division by zero. So that's why they say it's undefined. Using this definition, zero to zero is not defined. When algebra talks about zero to the zero, it has no definition. That's what undefined means is there's no definition. So algebra's opinion of zero to zero is it's got nothing to say. So if there's no definition provided by algebra, I'm going to go back to my definition from before, which was the empty product zero to zero equals one. So another comment a lot of people are saying is that zero to the zero is indeterminate. So when you enter calculus and you start looking at limits of functions and how they interact with each other as they approach certain points, some really cool stuff can happen. Here are some limits some people brought up. So the limit of n to the zero, if we plug in five, we know that's one or gives us one. We know that all these numbers, and we all agree on this, I'm assuming, that anything to the zero, two to the zero, these are all gonna give us one. Even negative four to the zero is gonna give us one. So we have all these points here. We're gonna approach the n equaling zero of this. And as we do that, we can see that we approach one. So in this case, we're saying that the limit is one. Now, in another case, we could say zero to the n. So for this one, we're plotting the points, but we say zero to the one, zero to the two, and so on. And all those are equal to zero. So all of these points are gonna be on the axis. And so what happens with this limit is as we approach zero for n, it approaches zero, not one. So these two limits give different answers. That's why they say it's indeterminate, because you can get different answers when you're using limits and functions. And I don't disagree with this either. This is totally right. It's not intrinsically with the zero to the zero. It's the functions and the limit that cause that to happen. So for all the calculus students who are arguing indeterminate, the limit as x approaches a of f of x to the power of g of x is indeterminate if that f of a gives you a zero when you plug it in and the g of a gives you a zero when you plug it in. So if by direct substitution you get zero to the zero, it's indeterminate. In no way is that saying that zero to the zero is indeterminate. Zero to the zero as a number 
is very different than getting zero to zero by direct substitution. They're not the same thing. So in summary, the empty product says that zero to the zero equals one, because if you're multiplying something by zero zeros, you're not gonna change the number. So that's the same thing as multiplying it by one. Next, algebra says zero to zero is undefined. Algebra offers no definition for zero to zero. If they're not gonna give me a definition, I'm gonna refer back to the one that I've already accepted. It comes from the idea of the empty product. Last with limits, this is 100% true. This, I do not think is the same thing as zero to the zero is indeterminate. Got to deal with limits and functions. That's not what's happening here. If someone wants to say zero to the zero is indeterminate, that's fine. But there's this implied context going on. To just say this as a dismissal of this, I don't think is fair. Hopefully this stuff makes sense. A lot of you watching this video might not have fully understood these concepts. It's going to take years of schooling to get through all of algebra and all of calculus to fully understand what's being said on this video. But for those of you who have been through it all, hopefully this clarifies why I stand by this and why I do understand both of these. This is what I'm gonna talk about as zero to the zero. Hopefully this was fun to go over and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.